Ryan Racer here once again for Drag Racing TV, which is brought to you by Strutmasters.com, the suspension expert. So on this Corona special interview, we've got Dan Fletcher on the line for this Zoom cast this afternoon. Dan, look, you're not too far from me in western New York. It's a beautiful day, but we're stuck inside. How are you handling all the lockdown that's currently happening in our world? Well, first off, hi, Lee. Good to see you. Good to talk to you. Um, it is a beautiful day here in the 585. We don't get too many sunny days and nice sunny day. Yo, lockdown, uh, I don't even hardly know what to say to tell you the truth. It's, uh, I generally think I've got the right uh, answer or spin or outlook and you know, think I can, some ask me a question, I can tell you how you should approach it or what you should, did I, you know, I don't, like they say, I don't know whether, you know, should or go blind right now. I mean, it's just uh, the craziest thing ever. And it's hard to, uh, you know, you lose your focus, you lose your purpose. And it's, it's, it's really difficult. You know, I mean, we don't live too far apart. You know, this area is pretty solid right now, health wise. And you know, we've got cases and there's been some deaths, but, you know, it's pretty rural here and, and we're pretty good, but it's uh, certainly weighs on you mentally, just the whole deal for a myriad of friggin' reasons and how and why, and we've yet to even uh, scratch the surface. You know, we got, you know, I wish I could say weeks, but we both know it's probably months, you know. That's right. This is probably going to be a long haul deal. And speaking of long hauls, before we begin the Zoom cast, you know, you were talking about some of the logistical issues you were going through. What have you had to do practically to get through this time? Because, you know, I know you're a guy that, on, even though a sportsman, you chase the national trail. So what are some things with the races that we're going to miss out on through this time you've already had to, you know, basically backtrack and handle to get things right? Well, I mean, dude, my whole world meant – my, my, in the last bunch of years, when things are going right, my specialty or, or talent or skill or whatever is logistics. <laughs> I mean, there's so much with all the race cars and, you know, I mean, motorhomes and trucks and trailers and sponsors to service and talk to and emails and travel arrangements and, you know, entering race cars and going here, going there, procuring parts and da 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 I mean, there's just a million freaking things to do. This deal... It's just really got me upside down. Because, I mean, for instance, today, my motorhome and trailer with the super stock car and the dragster are in Las Vegas. They're at Justin Lamb's house in Vegas. That's where I left them after Phoenix. This year, I wasn't ever planning on going to Gainesville because just everything was out there. And we we're going to be racing Gainesville, or pardon me, Vegas National, Divisional, and then the Spring Fling Bracket Race there. Driving across country, going to Charlotte, then the Glot Spring Fling bracket race or go out flame. Then we're going to do some house hunt in the Raleigh area because we're going to make a move down there and then go home for a couple days and then back down for Atlanta, more house hunting for a few days. And then from there to Richmond and well, everything I just said got all blown up. <laughs> I mean, none of it's happening. I mean, all gone. We had plane flights here and plane flights there. I mean, Dude, I mean, we literally, when NHRA redid the schedule last week, at the end of the week, we sat down on Sunday, my son Timothy and I and his fiance and, and my wife and my daughter, because my daughter does my social stuff. And, you know, we rebooked literally like 15 one-way plane flights. Just And I'm just, that's a crap shoe because we don't know if this is really going to happen. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, so like right now, I mean, we're supposed to, uh, fly to Vegas on the Monday before Gainesville, Atlanta, whatever you want to call it, to drive to Gainesville. And I'm going to have bring two cars there. And my son will be leaving from here with two more cars. So we'd have four cars down there and then go to the bracket race and then go to Bristol. And I just hope that we can actually start planning and have it stick, you know, but it's just, you know, the word of the day is fluid. And I mean, it's just so freaking fluid right now. You have no idea what you're doing. It just, it sucks, dude. I, I like to have a beginning, a middle, and end, and have everything lined out. That's just not possible right now. Not at all. Yes, sir. It's definitely not possible right now. Things are up in the air. I know just my own personal move 
back towards the south. It's been interrupted, and you know I've got to extend a few things with other parties and figure out other logistical matters. And it's definitely thrown a wrench into the system worldwide. So wow. you're feeling it. I'm feeling it. Something that fans might not realize, though, because I, I really believe possibly the average NHRA fan who can know who John Force is or Matt Hagen or Leah Pruitt, I don't think they know who you are. And you're a pretty bad dude out there, and they probably don't realize it. I mean, look at all those little guys you've got behind you. Look, give me a rundown on some of the highlights of your career, records you hold, and what you're chasing out there in the sportsman ranks. I've been a... Uh... You know, a lot of people don't know, a lot of people do know, so I don't mean to be redundant, but my whole deal is, uh, um, you know, I had a job at Xerox, left Xerox in 97 to race professionally. Um, you know, I was a bracket racer, you know, from the time I was 16 and what have you, my dad raced and blah, blah, blah. Um, left Xerox in 97 and I've been pretty fortunate to have a major corporate sponsorship for literally the last, you know, 22 years. I mean, starting with, with Valvoline in 1998 is my very first sponsor to 2020 with, with Strutmasters. Um, been a very blessed career and it's, you know, hopefully not done yet. It's certainly on hiatus right now, but uh, I've got 104 NHRA national event wins, won three of the, uh, what they call world championships, you know, series national championships. I won the divisional championship, I think six or seven times. Um, you know, it, it's been a, a great career and a great run, but it's it's a lot of hard work. And when I left Xerox, I had one sixty nine Camaro, you know, and one truck and one trailer. And now we've got, you know, five race cars and multiple trucks and trailers. We just bought a new two car tag enclosed trailer to for my boy to be able to carry two door cars um you know to the divisionals and to nationals so we wouldn't have to borrow another rig and take three rigs they have four cars and yada yada um kind of sucks it's a substantial investment i got sitting out there and haven't got to use it yet i want to go play with it so hopefully uh hopefully soon we'll get to get rolling but it's a lot of logistical work a lot of planning you know, again, with the five race cars, this winter we had to rebrand everything. So my dad's car, the Camaro Super Stocker, and the Dragster both got painted out west. Um, two of our other cars, the Camaro and the Nova, got painted back here in Buffalo. The station wagon got a full wrap. You know, that got done right here in the shop. Um, it's a lot of work to prepare stuff, and right now you're, you're all dressed up for the ball and nowhere to go. Yeah, Dan, give us a rundown on the cars that you've got, what class they are in in particular, as well as who sponsors them and who are the partners on those cars. Because from particular class to particular car, it seems like from what I've seen, you've got different partners with you making this deal possible. So give us the rundown on that. Well, this is really the first year that I've ever had to uh, put my Don Schumacher hat on and, and co-mingle sponsors and have different majors and, you know, trying to put all the funding together. I've been very fortunate again that Peak is a major sponsor for, I mean, it was probably better part of seven years. And uh, I'd always had one sponsor as the major on everything. Well, this year, the uh, Super Stock Car and the Super Comp Car have a major backing from Chip at Strub Masters. Fortunately, he, uh, you know, took pity on my pathetic little effort and decided to help me out like he does a lot of fellows that need help. Um, but I'd like to think I'm not going to be a charity case for him. I'm going to go out there and, and deliver and, and win races and represent the brand the way it should be represented. Um, on the Super Stocker, which has now gone back to Hugger Orange for the first time in literally 23 years, the car was born Hugger Orange, but in 1998 it got painted Velvling. Um, so it's orange, the major strutmaster, the drags is white, the major strutmaster. But my longest tenured sponsor is Mickey Thompson Tires. They've uh, they've been with me since 1994 when I won my very first NHRA national event. I went on the sweep the uh, Western Swing that year for the first time. I got lucky and did it again a couple of years ago. 
So Mickey Thompson is a really strong um, product and financial backer of my program. ATI Transmissions, um, ATI Performance Products, I should say, because they make a lot of different things. Um, they took over the major um, sponsorship role on my 69 Camaro Stocker and her 69 Nova Super Street Bracket Car. Um, Mickey Thompson also assumed the major role on the wagon, which used to be a street car, then it was a stocker, and now it's a high dollar bracket wagon. That we're gonna have that down in Florida actually running Super Street, and then at the block flame. So uh, we have five cars. Strut Masters is a major, ATI is a major, Mickey Thompson's a major, major associate. Um, Denzo helps me out quite a bit. Um, VP Fuels, Weld Racing, a lot of companies help out. I mean, it's, dude, I do this as cheap as a man can possibly do it. I do everything myself. You know, my trailer's old, my motorhome's old. I mean, I just maintain things. You know, my race cars are old, I'm old. And I got so much help financially and product wise, and I'm still just struggling to keep my head above water. I just, if it wasn't for the great sponsors, then there's just no way this could happen. Definitely, you got to cobble together the partnerships, and you've got some great partnerships. Hey, drag racing fan, hey, fellow racer, go buy some products from strutmasters.com, ATI, Mickey Thompson, Enzo. And all the other folks that support Dan. And, and by the way, say Dan sent me. Let the folks know that Dan's getting the word out on these great partners and products. And say that, Ed, pardon me for interrupting, but the minute you say that, I, I also got a hit on Holly, Holly EFI system. That's now an LS motor in my dad's car. Holly's been great help. Aeromotive's been great help. Um, there's just so many companies that have been wonderful to me, but Holly's really, really helping out. A lot not with just product but with knowledge on trying to get this LS deal figured out. Well, that's good to hear that it's not just handing over a check, but they're definitely involved in making the product work with your combination and getting down the drag strip. And I mean, man, who wouldn't want to be with you? Look at all those guys that are hanging out with you now. I mean, yeah. you gotta get on board with Dan Fletcher. Now, Dan, that's not you're not just this sportsman drag racer though. At home, what is the business that you're in? Where do you else do you make your living beside drag racing? Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you, primarily it is just as a drag racer, but I also sell race car trailers. Um, just a little side gig there, you know. I mean, it's not I should probably put a lot more time and effort into it because it, it's a pretty good deal. Um, but I've been a trailer dealer. Dan Fletcher trailer sales for probably 12 years now. I sell primarily vintage trailers. Um, it's a great brand and company out of Elkhart, Indiana. Troy Stone owns it. Um, they're racers themselves, build a great product. Um, I also can broker deals for Teeny and Gold Rush. Um, but this past couple of winters, I've taken a little side job and out there getting my Amazon delivery grind on and my 1994 Saturn wagon, dropping off your Amazon products, make me a few extra shekels here and there doing that, just trying to make some travel money during the winter. But uh, primarily it's through the, uh, it used to be through winning races and, and winning 20 grand a crack when you'd win a national event. Now you can't win here as much, so it's really through the marketing partners and trying to get out there and represent. That's really how we, uh, make ends meet around here. And with you mentioning that at one time, it seems like you were able to get more of a payout from national events, and that's not the case now. You know, when I talk with, in the past, I've talked personally with Don O'Neill. Yesterday, I got to talk with Stocks, Stocks Ford, and they're running top sportsmen. I've heard from both of them. I've heard from other sportsmen racers, and let me get it from you. What are the challenges of running sportsmen at the national level, and what are some things you think the NHRA in particular could do to help you all as sportsmen? Because I really think y'all play a vital role in the event and the show. I mean, even a practical standpoint from putting rubber down on the track. So what are some things the NHRA could do right now for you guys? Well, Look, I, I mean, I try and keep it, you know, real. I try and, I'm not just going to sit here and, and complain and bitch that, you know, NHRA does this, that, or the other. I, there's a lot of things they do that I'm not happy with. There's a lot of things they do that I think they're trying to do the best they can for us. 
You know, we when I first when I left Xerox in 1997, I could win twenty thousand dollars when I won a race. That was how I had a business model when I left there. I only made like forty grand at Xerox. I mean, I was an engineering tech, whatever, with a couple weeks vacation, and I had this plan that I could, if I went to fifteen national events, that I really felt like I could win one or two. Where's my forty? Win an IHRA race here. Round money, win class. You used to win a thousand fifteen hundred dollars, win class eliminations and stocker super stuff. Now they only pay sticker money at a couple. It's not really NHRA's fault. I mean, when the economy blew up in two thousand eight and nine, lots of people found different ways to. You know, they had to shrink. Obviously, they had to tighten up. They had to seize up. They're losing money. You know, like kind of what's I'm afraid going to happen now. I'm afraid we're going to take another hit now. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be good. Obviously. And, uh, you know, I mean, so, I mean, and then, so, I mean, companies bailed out. I used to have 60 decals on a car, 60. Now I got maybe 30. It's literally half, you know. You used to really have trouble decaling a car. And I'm pretty anal and want everything square and perfect. Well, dude, I mean, it would be scattershot. There'd be shit everywhere because there's so many decals. I don't have that problem anymore. It's a lot easier to sticker a car these days. Um, you know, but you can't, you know, you can't blame companies. I mean, companies... The midway at the races used to be gigantic. You know, it used to be huge. You could build a freaking race car out of the midway for crying out loud. Now there's only a handful of trucks that are there every time. You know, it costs a lot of money to put a truck down the road. You got to, you know, I mean, I know what it costs to put a truck down the road and then to pay the guy a, a decent salary to do it. I mean, all just, it's got to be all part of a marketing package and all part of a program. And, you know, God bless the computer. God bless the Zoom download and blah, 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 whatever. But, you know, the internet and digital marketing and impressions on Facebook, whatever, can be bought so much cheaper than, you know, a brick and mortar store like myself, if you will, that it just, it's so competitive to get, you know, advertising dollars. I mean, so for NHRA to sign up companies to post contingency, you know, NHRA, let's face it, they've cut their staff to the bone. There's no one out there to really sell programs to companies anymore they it's not their focus they're trying to keep their head above water i mean it just dude the whole world sucks i mean i don't you know it's just it's terrible the, the sponsor dollars aren't aren't you know what they were contingency wise and you know i i wish that you know the economy was in the last couple of years doing great and i thought we're we're trending upwards you know and i mean whether you like trump or don't like trump and i'm not saying i'm a fan really i mean he's kind of a obnoxious person, but I don't think he was doing a bad job. You know, I mean, the, you know, the economy is doing well and people had jobs and we're making money. And, and now the last month, it's just all gone to hell. And I'm afraid it's going to, it's going to be a pretty damaging thing for the whole racing deal again, where we're starting to crawl back, you know, contingency wise. I'm, I don't mean to be the grim reaper, but I mean, it's not, not looking too spiffy for the future here, you know? Definitely all this has presented new challenges, and I think challenges that are going to have ramifications for a very long time. And, you know, the ones that probably get impacted the most by those ramifications are people like the stocks and yourself as Dan Fletcher, where the pool of money is shrinks and they want the best bang for their buck, so they might look at a, a top-tier class and be an associate there instead of being possibly a primary sponsor with someone like yourself. Now you mentioned, you know, Facebook, the internet, things of that nature. Do you find it challenging today since the rules of the game have changed to some extent with less contingency money that also being a content creator, which is a big buzz for teams now, it's not just getting something on the side of the car, but it's pushing that brand through other avenues. Is that challenging with everything else that's going on to do that too and be creative all the time and, and just keep up that part of the bargain? It, it certainly is, and I'm probably a little bit late to the party, but I think we're getting a lot better at it. Let me go back and speak to something you just said, though. <clears throat> you know, fighting for sponsor dollars. You know, the NHRA contingency program, I'm saying that's a rough sell for NHRA to get out there and get people – you know, you would have to have a dedicated person that really got out there and sold and sold the program and sold. You know, I just don't know that that's a priority for NHRA right now or they have the manpower to do it. But for you to speak to procuring sponsorship, 
sportsmen versus pros that someone might want to go be an associate on a pro car as opposed to, well, dude, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and talk about money, but you can back my whole deal for what some people are going to spend to go be an associate on a pro car at one race. You can have four or five cars, multiple drivers from, from the West Coast to the East Coast, from North to South, from February through November. I mean, dude, a sportsman program, the proper sportsman program, I mean, that can really deliver a huge bang for the buck. You just have to have a sponsor that's going to activate it. You know, I mean, that's another buzzword, right? Content, activation. I mean, I've learned a lot in the last years, the social media deal, like I said, I'm probably a little late to the party on it, but the last year or two, you know, we're really making a strong push there. And, you know, I've got, you know, the vibe from sponsors, you know, even some associate help I'm getting, that's really what they want to see. I mean, I don't want to say it doesn't matter if I win or lose, but I swear to God, it almost half the job just showing up and putting a lot of content out there, just being out there, being present and putting your sponsors' names digitally out there in front of someone all the time. And that is a big, huge thing. But again, you can buy, you can buy coverage, you can buy exposure with a sportsman team quite economically and, and properly activated and get a hell of a bang for the buck. And that's what I'm trying to do here with my deal. Hey, sponsor out there, whoever you are, look at a sportsman card. Just as Dan mentioned, you're getting a whole lot more exposure for your money instead of a small sticker on the side of a dump truck spoiler on a funny car. You can be on a whole door of a uh, 69 Camaro, Camaro, for example. I am curious, though, Dan, with the NHRA, what are your thoughts on exposure for the sportsman classes? Do you think there's something else that they could do to give you all more exposure at a national event, possibly TV? I mean, I cannot remember the last time I saw sportsmen's like the finals of a sportsman class showed on national television i have to go back to some old races to see like every class be shown and who won the finals so what about exposure what about fan experience from the nhra to you guys as sportsmen well you know i mean that's a good question it's interesting i uh i think they're just missing the boat tremendously i'm not taking advantage of you know, look, I've got a dragster. Super Comp probably isn't the most exciting class, right? It's competitive. I enjoy racing it. But fan exposure-wise, it's probably not the most exciting thing. Stock and Super Stock Eliminator? Like I think Reinhardt said before, dude, you've got the greatest car show that you could ever imagine. The most wide diversity in, in, in iron, from old iron to new iron. You know, in, or in my case, both. I've got old iron with new technology. I mean, stock and super stock racing to me, dude, I mean, all these car shows, all the, all the different shows that involve, you know, old hot rods and whatever that are so in vogue right now, they got NHRA has them right there as a captive audience. I think that Joe Costello is, is trying to do a little bit more with, you know, pit interviews with sportsman stuff, whatever. Dude, I think there's, and they've got it all there for free. I mean, you know, you see sportsman finals on TV on the Lucas Oil Series show, which is only, I guess it's probably an hour, but it's basically an alcohol show. And then in the last 15 minutes, they show the sportsman cars. I swear to God, I mean, the factory stock cars, I think are so exciting. You know, stock and super stock eliminator, I mean, who doesn't like a car that does a wheelie? I mean, <laughs> wheelies are cool, no matter what, right? I mean, there's, you know, from a Hemi Cuda to a 69 Camaro to a, a, a 2018 Camaro to a, a 2018 Ford. I mean, they, they, there's such a diversity of, of muscle and stock and super stock that I swear to God, I really, and again, I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the NHRA broadcasting crew thinks. I mean, I, I know Lewis Bloom is a great guy and I think he tries to push for some sportsman oriented stuff because he realizes value there and interest there. I, I would think that there could be on the pro show, you know, as opposed to, I mean, a lot of people, it's very cliche to say it, I guess, but as opposed to one more interview with someone about some 
just, you know, bullshit deal that what I would show some actual race cars, <laughs> show a 69 Camaro doing a burnout and standing up on the wheelie bars. You know, I mean, I think people would like to see that, you know, I, and they would say that, you know, because people have said, I guess, probably, you know, why can't you at least just show the, the sportsman finals on the national show? Well, they have their own Lucas Oil show. Well, show them on both. <laughs> would that would, would that be so bad? I mean, would that really? I mean, what would it take to show the finals of, of stock and super stock? And I'm not trying to cut super comp, super gas out. I mean, I, I race those classes. But, you know, you could probably show them all. But, I mean, stock and super stock, for Christ's sakes, are exciting. You know, but that's just me. You know, what do I, what do I know? Well, you definitely have some great cars and doing some great drag racing moves, as it were. I mean, yeah, like you said, who doesn't like a Willie? I mean, you know, I I, de I know a lot of folks are gravitating toward factory stock. Why? They look like the actual cars. They're high-powered. They're heavy, though, and yet they're doing tall wheel stands and carrying them far. It's just awesome to see. Yeah. And whether it's, you know, stock or, or factory stock, I mean, people do still resonate with those cars, and the next step, definitely has to be they can they need to be able to resonate with the personality that's in the car and they've got to have that exposure so i'm right there with you on that they've got to open up and get some more exposure for you guys in the sportsman ranks let me ask this this was thrown out yesterday with the stocks as an idea and see if you would if you with who you are would like something like this let's say you win the national event in whatever class you're in the next national event, they bring you up in the pits closer towards Nitro and the pro guys, and you can mingle with those fans where they typically hang out, and you're, you get more exposure for your sponsors, your personality, with getting the kind of the pat on the back. I mean, you did something huge and won a national event as a sportsman. What would you think of something like that or any other ideas? Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's a very good idea. I mean, obviously, if you're trying to represent sponsors, you want to be – in the highest traffic areas, you know, and I think NHRA frankly does try and work with some of the sponsored sportsman teams to get them in a little bit of a better spot. Um, but, you know, there should be, whether you've got a sponsor or not, that'd be a great perk, right? I mean, it won't cost an NHRA a nickel to do it. There's so many things you can do that don't cost money that might be helpful, you know, just to customer appreciation and or marketing. Um, I think that's a very good idea. You know, I mean, definitely move you up to the front row. We get to the front row, have a better pit area in and of itself. Look, throughout the tour, what are some things as a sportsman you're looking for from a venue, from a track? What do you want? Because most of the time, you know, you all are not under an asphalt pit. A lot of times it's dirt or grass. Maybe you got gravel. What are you looking from a venue? What makes it easy for you all as sportsman drivers? Well, you know, what you just said, pavement. <laughs> You know, I mean, if it's gonna, if it's gonna rain, you know, no one likes, again, anal swords like me that don't want to track a blade of grass into their trailer. You know, when you're parked in the mud, that's just terrible, you know. Fortunately, there's a lot of great facilities. You know, we're generally at Charlotte twice a year, which is probably about my favorite track. Generally at Vegas twice a year. <laughs> you know, not this year, but, you know, again, we're all on pavement. It's, it's just great. What am I looking at for a facility? I realize they can't all be Charlotte. They can't all be Vegas. I understand that. But it would be at least nice to have a paved road to your trailer. I know that you might not be on pavement, but when you've got a four-wheel drive your race car down the road to try and get back there, that really sucks. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's, you know, there's some great facilities. There's some that are a little bit not so great. You know, Seattle, obviously, is probably one of the, not best facilities on the tour. Um, I don't know, like Topeka. I mean, in Topeka, we're parked a long ways away, but we're on pavement. So, I mean, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you know, it's a little hard for the crowd to get out there and see us, so it's not good for me in that regard. Um, Chicago, if we could ever go there and have it not rain, we're parked on grass, but it's beautiful, lush grass with paved roads. That's an example, I guess, of what – that to me, that place is perfect, but – it seems to just rain every friggin' year when you try and go there. So I don't think that, you know, sportsman guys, I mean, some are prima donnas, whatever, but they don't want a whole hell of a lot. You know, I mean, just don't, don't, uh, you know, don't, don't sink us 18 feet in the mud, but sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. It just is what it is, you know. 
Well, Dan, look, I know for you, racing at the level that you're racing at, it's a serious deal. I can remember at uh, Pomona, I think you went out in the semifinals, you came back, and uh, I was waiting for an interview, but you were not in the mood. And that's fine. I understand what you drivers are going through. It's, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel sorry about it. But, you know, look, give me your thoughts on, you know, why you're doing this, how you feel about it, why you're so passionate about it, even at the level you're at. Because fans will look at it and go, like, oh, I mean, you're drag racing, but you're not doing what John Forks is. But you're out there doing really the same deal. It just might be slower. Let's go back to Pomona one second, dude. I apologize. I haven't really got to talk to you since then. <clears throat> no, I, but it was just, I mean, you know, I came back. Dude, you cannot lose in the semifinals. You can't lose in the semis. That's the paycheck round. Because you lose in the semis, you get 500 bucks. You might not win 20 grand anymore. You win the race, you're going to make 10, 12,000. You get runner up, you're going to get four grand, whatever it might be. That was a huge round. You. Dude, I, I had flown to Vegas the week before, prepped race cars, went to a chassis diner on Lake Havasu, flew back home, went back to, got my shit, went out there, kept, brought my graphics guy in, graphic both of the cars, you know, getting all the main sponsors on there, Strutmasters and ATI and Mickey Thompson, then spent two days decaling the cars with the contingency sponsors, just every minute, just, I'm at the other side of the friggin' world, I'm 2,300 miles from home a fortune and plane tickets and entry fee and this and that. And now your first race with a new sponsor, want to get the man a trophy and losing a friggin' semifinals. Don't get paid. Don't get a trophy. Pack your shit up. Fly home with your tail between you. It sucks. Yeah. So I roll back and you're sitting there hanging out ready to do it. I'm sorry, bro. I wasn't in, I wasn't in the mood for an interview. <laughs> But we could have done one. I still in ten minutes. I've been better. But right that second, I wasn't throwing stuff. I'm not. I don't come back where I'm. I'm pissed off like that. But I'm probably not a good interview right that minute. You know. So. No, and and I mentioned that because that is exactly what I wanted for people to hear. It's a serious deal for you. You're passionate about it. It's real. It's not just you know going out on the weekend and just cruising down the quarter mile. It is highly competitive racing. Dude, it's, it's, I don't mean to say anything bad about pros. Pros are what they are. They, they're the ones that bring, you know, the majority of the fans of the racetrack, you know, they're the ones that NHRA chooses to put on TV, you know, 90% of the time. I mean, I understand that, but dude, I mean, sportsman racers are friggin' racers, you know, they are hardcore. They're the guy that drives all night to get there. That's changing a, a blown up trailer tire on the side of the road while trafficking moving over. They're the guy that sleeps in their friggin' truck. You know, they're the guy that's spending money they shouldn't spend to be there. They're the guy that works on their shit all night long. You know, it, and it's serious, dude. People are there to win. There's some people that are there playing golf. I ain't there playing golf. I'm there to, you know, when I left Xerox again, dude, even before I left Xerox, before I started NHRA racing, if I didn't win, I mean, I needed to win because I needed the money because I didn't have the money to do this in the first place. But I don't like losing. And what I don't like is is not, dude, if I just get beat, it's one thing. But if I don't execute properly, I mean, if I make mistakes, I'm not good with making mistakes. If I just get my ass handed to me and I did everything right and I get beat, okay, I'm not thrilled, but, you know, whatever. But when you make a mistake, and again, dude, I'm talking about, you know, that's what I always tell my kids when they're, they're at the local track. If they're an umpire and they're 28 miles from the house, I said, well, you know, yeah, no, I'm sorry, honey. I, I know you lost and it's a thousandth again and you're pissed off. Or, but you know what? In 40 minutes, you're going to be at the house. I'm 2,000 miles away from home. That, you, that sucks, dude. You put that much work and that much time, that much preparation, that much effort into going to do something. You're all the way on the other side of the country and they have a thousandth of a second go the wrong way. Dude, that sucks. It's terrible. It is terrible. I lost a junior dragster race once by the smallest of margins. And it's just, it's just hard to compute. It's like, I didn't lose. How did I lose? This, how can you even measure that? And with you, there's so much stakes on the line, stakes that I can't even comprehend. And I, again, I think that's what people are missing. I don't know if the NHRA needs to do a reality show with some of the sports guys and follow, but y'all are extremely passionate 
I mean, you're not these go in the lounge and hide out type of dudes. You want to get out there, you want to race, and you want to win. And there are some awesome stories out there in the sportsman bits. And so, look, speaking of stories, give me, what's a story from traveling the national tour that just tops them all? Whether it's a prank, fun time, or a serious moment, what story in Dan Fletcher's career tops them? I got, I got a lot of them. Um, it'd be hard to pick one. Let me get to that one second. What you just said about a reality show, I had one of my friends tell me that years ago. And it, and again, I, NHRA, dude, they could just have a friggin' film crew out there at night. I mean, it might be, I mean, look, reality TV is so popular or whatever. I mean, it might not be politically correct. Maybe that's not what they want to pitch. But I mean, the cornhole games and the parties and the bullshit that goes on at the track at night, whatever, there's a lot of good stories to be told. If they really wanted to, I mean, between, again, between the muscle cars and, and the, the personalities, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's some dry people that aren't fun, but there's a lot of really characters out there in the sportsman pits. There'd be a lot of stories to be told. So. Some of my best ones on the, the travel, I just tell you this, like I tell people all the time, it's it's very, you know, right now this whole deal sucks, but not leaving the house, shit doesn't generally go wrong if you just sit at home. The minute you put that truck, pull it in gear, and, and get on down the road with 80 foot of motor room and trailer, you can have a lot of problems. Um, <laughs> one of my very best ones, I've had, I, dude, I could just go on with stories, but one that I always, because it had a happy ending, um, I was still at Xerox. It's, uh, it's like June of 1995. My wife is pregnant. We've got two boys at that point. My wife's pregnant with her daughter. It's born in December. Um, it's June, July. I'm at work at Xerox and We've got a motor home with a single car trailer and just a super stock car at that point. She's coming to pick me up after work on Wednesday. We're gonna to drive to English Town. I'm gonna to make time trials on Thursday. And I'm flying home Thursday night because I called in sick on Thursday. Fly home Thursday night to show up and work on Friday to sell the sick day. Because back then, believe it or not, we'd have a hundred cars in every class. And somehow, I don't know what the hell's happened to the freaking schedule. There's still 24 hours in a day, but we used to actually get like two time runs on Friday, on Thursday, maybe three class eliminations on Friday and not run first round till Saturday. And there's a hundred cars <laughs> and there was more pro cars than there is now. I don't, I don't know what the hell's happened, but regardless, my pregnant wife leaves the house with the motorhome still plugged into the 30 amp outlet inside of the garage, rips the freaking panel box off the wall of the motorhome, stuffs it back in there, reels the cord up. I walk out after work, don't know nothing. She tells me what happened. I look, obviously not happy, you know. We leave. We don't get five miles down the road and we're on a, you know, it's two lanes going this way, two lanes coming this way, and there's a stoplight and there's a left turn lane. And bottom line, some guy wants to make a left turn, but he's not in the left lane. He's in the middle lane. He just stops. Everyone's jamming their brakes, swerving around him. You know, I, I'm on his shoulder going to go by while the guy ahead of me locks him up, comes to a friggin' stop. I ask him, and like, no tomorrow. My two boys are in the bed in the back of the motor home. They come rolling off the bed on the floor. The refrigerator opens, shit all over the floor. And it, it hits so hard, and motor homes, a class A typical motor home, are, are so flimsy, really. It, it, it hits so hard. And, and just gauge so much the drive shaft fell out of the thing. The, the drive shaft fell out of the back of the transmission. I punted the guy ahead of me into a car over here. That lady's pregnant. The car hits her. Her water breaks. Ambulance for her. My wife's pregnant. You know, the, she's, you know, I did a, the front's blown off of this motor home. You know, she's, what are we going to do? We're going to freak home. What do you mean? What are we going to do? But I made fruit salad. I mean, the fruit salad's all over Florida. Oh, my God. Dude, we limped down the road a few miles. I zip tie up the freaking grill. I'm looking at the headlights, you know, dangling over here. 
well, we go a few miles more up the road, I'm going to turn around and you know, you, okay, and you hit the brakes and well, well, I guess let's try it. And so we hobbled the thing there and I always remember the next morning waking up in line outside the track before they park us, Wally Clark walking by, a great super stack guy from Canada who I've known forever, you know, nice motor on flat check in front and just blast it off the freaking truck. Um, so we make our time trials and my wife takes me to the Newark airport and said motor home. I fly home, go to work the next day, fly back and we won the friggin' race somehow. <laughs> 1995 English town, won the, won the event. It was a uh, race that wasn't going to happen, but it was one of my good ones. That was a good one. Wow. Thought about giving up, not going. You went on and you won the race. Impressive. Impressive. Yeah. That's a crazy start. That's a crazy start to the day, to the whole weekend, and then go actually win the national event. I'm, I'm glad you've got that story, and it turned out to be far better than its beginning and have a happy <laughs> ending. Now, Absolutely. you mentioned that there's a lot of characters out there in the sportsman ranks, traveling the national tour or popping up at divisionals, whatever it may be. Look, give us the down low on someone that NHRA fans should know. Drop a name. Tell us about them. Who should they know? beyond Dan Fletcher there in those sportsman ranks. Huh. Now you're probably after to write for another question. Let me think about that. I mean, you know, Kyle Sleipel, who's battling, I got a shirt on here right now, big nasty. He's uh, battling cancer, and he, but he's just a, you know, I mean, he's going through a rough time right now, but he's just the goofiest, happiest you've ever met in your life, dude. Just a, a character and just a fun, fun guy. Um, there's, there's just so many guys that God passed away a few years ago. Um, Mickey Whaley is just a fun loving guy. They're just, just a character. You know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that, uh, a lot of serious racers, but a lot of guys that love to have fun. Got him. Hey, maybe having fun is a good thing. One of the funnest guys ever was a guy named Jim Harrington, Jimmy the shoe. Everyone, everyone loved Harrington like no tomorrow. And he passed away a few years ago. There's a, uh, there's a lot of a lot of interesting guys, and I've been going to some more of these big high dollar bracket races, and those guys really like that fun too. It's a bit of a younger crowd than the NHRA crowd might be, and you know, me, I roll up the carpets. I, I try to be inside by nine o'clock. I'm not out there at uh, midnight, one o'clock. But a lot of people enjoy the nightlife. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, you said earlier the cars are old and you're old, so you got to get your sleep. You got to get your sleep in at the events and be ready to go. So. Uh, you mentioned your your children are racing. What what are they in? And they're out there at Empire Dragway. They're in Leicester, New York. So so what's their racing careers looking like starting out? Well, both of my sons race. Um, you know they've raced with me forever. Thomas is kind of going out on his own here the last couple of years. Um, but they both won a couple one entry national events. They both won a few divisional events. Um, they both done really well locally. They're they're uh, they're both good racers. Um, Thomas is just really a tremendous natural talent. Uh, Timothy's an extremely hard worker, and they both get to the end result. You know, one might not work quite as hard. <laughs> you know, one might work a little bit harder. But uh, you know, Thomas, like I said, is just tremendously gifted and naturally skilled. And Timothy will just outwork you. You know, he's really dedicated to his craft. He's like on Luke Bogaki's website. Um, you know listening to Luke's tutelage and, and, you know, works with his practice tree diligently and puts in the time and the effort that it takes. Because it's, dude, you can have natural talent, you know, but it's hard work. I mean, that's what it is, is hard work. And that's what I've tried to really instill in them, you know. And, you know, Timothy, uh, Timothy's a really hard worker. And uh, I think Thomas is, you know, a little bit of a work in progress on the hard work part, but he'll get there eventually. Good man. Good to hear that your your children are following in those footsteps and enjoying racing and doing doing well. That's great my to man, hear. My daughter, my daughter actually is going to get. She drove the wagon in bracket trim a couple years ago. And again, this whole situation's got things a little screwed up for us. But she's uh, was supposed to run the uh, new media points meet in the wagon in Super Street. Um, now we're probably going to be in Gainesville for the Atlanta race that weekend. So depending on, you know, you know, if, if somehow things work out and we can start racing in May, um, try and get her down the track at the Norwalk points meet and the Maple Grove points meet. 
that you know, I'm, I'm really worried about, you know, national events because any tree's got to put, you know, a lot of asses in the seats to make it financially viable. Their TV deal isn't, you know, as strong as maybe some of the others. And I worry that, you know, that they're going to be able to put spectators, you know, arm to arm in the stands the first of June. I hope so. But I think the bracket racing and I think divisional events that obviously are more of a participant thing as opposed to a spectator deal. I'm, I'm really hoping that, you know, end of May, 1st of June, I'm really hoping those will fire up. And why make those, you know, if any jury still doesn't have national events, you know, in the month of June, if it gets pushed back more, well, now you have really should be taking advantage of, of the cars you've got doing something in, in broadcasting coverage of a divisional event for crying out loud. You know, I mean, a lot of great cars, you know, put together a half hour special on that. You know, I would think that would be viable. I agree with you. It was surprising to me when they announced at Gainesville, all right, we're not going to run the pros. We're not going to bring fans in. But they ran the sportsman classes at Gainesville. We'll put them on TV yeah. and give folks time to talk and interview. And, you know, you still had drivers there from pro ranks. You still had crew members from the pro ranks, you know, do something with the sportsman drivers and still have the pros involved and put it on the tube. Why not? Even if it was just YouTube at yeah. that point, they have those outlets and they could have put it out there and it could have been visible and seen. Dude, I mean, right now, you know, I don't really, I don't ever watch TV until like eight, nine o'clock at night. Oh, hi puppy. Um, I, in, you know, we'll watch uh, as a family, you know, Shark Tank seems to be, you know, like a family favorite, right? But then I'll go upstairs at like nine o'clock. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's so little on right now. I mean, you know, there's no, there's no anything. So the, the world is starving for content, right? I mean, the minute, the minute you're allowed to fire up a drag race, I would, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously NHRA's deals with Fox, um, and I don't know if, you know, they had bought time for the pro shows and now they didn't occur. They probably get credit, but they, I don't know. I would think that, I would think that you could probably put some sort of content out there and it wouldn't be, wouldn't cost you maybe anything if you gave them a, a finished produced product, you know, and I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a stupid drag racer, but you know, if, if any tray, the first points me, let's say it's maple or let's say it's, by some chance, it's the Norwalk points me in the middle of May. It was supposed to be the same weekend as Atlanta. That race, dude, the first time they open a gate to the place, it's going to blow up. And that place there, they used to do a deal where they gave tickets away to local, you know, had a, it was a sportsman cavalcade of stars. Um, you know, they would put a lot of people in the stands there. He gave away a bunch of tickets, but he sold the shit out of ice cream and concessions and parking and whatever. Um, if that race goes off and someone wanted to do a TV production of it, I mean, I think that, uh, I think there would be, hey, dude, the networks, any sporting network is just crying for content right now, right? There's nothing to show. I mean, there's literally nothing, zero. You know, they're moving up the Michael Jordan E60 special, a 10 part, you know, just try and get something up there. I mean, dude, I would, the first time that there's a burnout, I'd have a camera. I don't care if it's at a local friggin' bracket track or what. I would, I would, if I was NHRA, I would, I would be trying to pimp it, you know. I definitely agree. I wish the weather was a little better up here and yeah. testing was already going on. I would be already back at Lancaster or Empire getting whatever I could get because I know some of the southern videographers, they are already able to still get some content at some of right. these tests with the weather being good. But, folks, that's why Drag Racing TV streaming on Roku and Monday Morning Racer right here, that's why we've got such fine people like Dan Fletcher, Justin Ashley, Doug Foley, Ricky Smith already interviewed at the moment and in the past for you to catch and plenty more upcoming to try to give you some content. But then I definitely agree, whatever is out there, whatever is going on, even though it might not be a national meet, NHRA, get the content out there for the fans. This is prime time, really, to take a step forward with what's going on. So, Dan, look, 
I have it's enjoyed. An opportunity. Certainly an opportunity. It is. It is a great opportunity. It is a great opportunity. And I really think whatever sport it is, whether it's a motor sport to ball and stick, whatever, if they figure out in this time right now to get interactive content out, they're going to be a sport that goes forward instead of behind during this time. Dan, look, it's been great to sit down and talk with you and have a great audience such as all those little men behind you. I want to give you the last word, and this is what I've been asking folks that I've been interviewing. Give that last word to your fans, partners, and, by the way, your competitors. What's Dan's <laughs> last word? Well, I guess Dan's last word would, uh, you know, we didn't talk a lot about the virus itself. Um, you know, it's a terrible time. You know, some of my uh, staff here on hand, I don't think has really respected the severity of it quite as much as, as I did initially. I think people are growing to understand how serious it is. I'm not a, a big drama queen or whatever, but to me, this is pretty simple. I mean, you know, okay, yeah, there's all the stay at home deal, you know, whatever, but just be smart, dude, just be smart. This isn't, it, it, I mean, I was a germaphobe before this all started. I had hand sanitizer in all my vehicles on my bench and my desk, whatever. I mean, I can't get sick. I'm a one man band. I get sick. I got a problem. Not only is it uncomfortable, but I'm trying to do some within thousands of a second. I, I got to be on top of things, but this whole deal, you know, don't go to the store needlessly, obviously, you know, I mean, save up your list, you know, don't go to the bank needlessly. Now it's just drive throughs but don't, but you know, have gloves, have sanitizer. Don't just, common sense stuff you know don't you know you go to the grocery store wipe the buggy down before you go in before you get back in your car when you get back in your air clean your hands up just dude because i don't know where this is going to end and i need to get back to work <laughs> we need to get back to racing you know i mean so it's just everyone do their part i mean just be smart about this when i saw the footage and they probably again it's the media just trying to rabble rouse probably but the footage of spring breakers on the beach, I was just like, you're freaking kidding me, right, dude? I mean, that, you know, that's just, talk to a buddy of mine in Jersey that works at Jessel. So the big problem there is, and, and I understand it, it's kind of like Amish, the Hasidic Jewish community there is their own little world with their own police force and ambulance and, and fire department. And they're still having community gatherings and, and not socially distancing and then some of those people get on the train and go into the city to go work. I mean, if we aren't smart about that, it's just going to drag this out further. I mean, it's a terrible situation. But just use your friggin' head. That's, I guess that's my last word to everyone, is just use your head. Be smart. I'm not telling you be scared. There's times when you got to go to the store. There's times where you got to be on top of someone. But just try and approach everything smart. Just be smart. That's all. So thank you to Strut Masters. Thank you to Mickey Thompson. Thank you to ATI. Thank you to VP and Weld and Denzo and Aeromotive, Holly EFI. Thanks to my wife and kids. And uh, thanks to Chip. Appreciate everything he does for all of us. Drag racing fan for Dan Fletcher, myself, the Monday morning racer, Lee Craft. This has been another quarantine special interview brought to you by Drag Racing TV funded and inspired by, brought to you by the one and only Chip Lofton and Strutmasters.com, which are the suspension experts. Until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.